I like to know where people stand so I know how to treat you accordingly. They be trying to do it, I'm just doing me. Yeah. I'll be working hard, he just want it free. Be competitive with yourself. Hey, what's going on? It's Jay Sean for another video. Uh, this one I'm going to try to make as quick as possible. Uh, let me start by talking about uh, the vehicle pickups. Not that you care or maybe you do, you don't. But if you follow some of my recent videos, you're going to hear me talking about potentially picking up. I was looking at a C8 and then it was a Tesla toss up. Um, the C8 is out of the question right now because the price point that I want to get it for, even though I've seen it online for similar prices, everybody's saying now that... Um, it's unrealistic. I talked to a few dealers, sat down with them, and they're saying it's unrealistic what I'm asking for. GM put a letter out saying that they weren't supposed to go higher than MSRP, but they're always finding weird ways around it. All dealerships are kind of doing it right now, but it just doesn't make sense to me to aim for that at this point uh, with those crazy markups. 20, 25K markups, it just seems silly. Uh, even though even Mercedes and other brands are doing it even more than that, it's just it just doesn't make sense to me so with that being said um i don't know what it is about the tesla but it just keeps getting getting overlooked or for some reason i just keep overlooking it i i tried to go back and, and test drive the the model 3 performance because we're originally going for the model y it's like there's always a hiccup there's always something in the way like they didn't have the car to even get into it again i wanted to make sure the back seats were usable a lot of cars like uh, Porsche Macan, uh, we looked at before, the back seat is not usable at all. And I didn't even like the way it drove. So with that being said, there's a lot of uh, ups and downs to a lot of the decisions that are trying to be made. And um, if you saw before, you saw I had a, a 2022 Tahoe, still got that, had a Mercedes E-Class. Um, we actually were going to keep that, get an extra car on top of it. If we got the C8, we're going to probably just get rid of it. But we ended up getting another vehicle and it. Unfortunately, it wasn't the Tesla. But now that after having this particular car that you see I'm actually in, um, I think we're actually still considering the Tesla on top of this. And uh, I kind of feel like uh, we should have did the Tesla first and then weighed it out because I kept thinking the E-Class and the Tesla were too similar as far as body size and stuff like that. Uh, aesthetic wise, the Mercedes looks better um and it drives really well it's pretty fast for what it is um so let's just get right into it one of the cool features on this particular vehicle that i'm in is the vehicle that we purchased uh the body style stays the same for 2020 up to 2022 present day is the voice command feature is pretty dope i gotta start the car i gotta crack my uh garage door open oh i gotta start the car first hold up Let me crack this joint real quick. All right. So with that being said, one of the cool things, actually, I'm going to just lift this up. Let me see. I can see the line on my face from the, from the light from the garage door. One of the cool things, it has a voice command. You can do many things, not just this particular function, but I actually use it in real life when you're driving. It makes sense. Hey, Mercedes. How may I help you? Open sunshade. Okay, I'm opening the roller sun blinds. So that's a cool feature. You, If you saw one of my other videos, you're going to see me activate that. Um, and I kind of briefly speak about it. This is a G-Class um, mini sport kind of SUV. Uh, I really like it. If you also heard some of my other previous videos, one of my dream, present day dream cars would be like a GT63S, which is the four door sport coupe sedan um, for Mercedes. And the other one is a GLE. So you can get an AMG version of a GLE also. They got 450. Um, they also, I think, even have a 550, I think with different engine components but you can also get the amg uh, versions of all those with the amg grill etc so this particular one it does have tan interior beige interior i really do like aesthetically i think it looks better to have light interior but i don't prefer it i feel like light interior just gets too dirty these do have perforated seats which i actually don't prefer but you need it to have cooled seats these are heated and cooled um so if I would compare this to the E-Class, which I never did an actual video on or anything like that, there are some small features that are missing that I wish I did have. Let me just show you, try to flip this around. Um, 
uh, hold on, flip this joint. All right, so as you can see here, I'm missing some controls on the passenger side. It still has the Burmeister surround sound, but you can't change certain functions on like the headrest separately and stuff like that. One cool feature that we did have um, on the driver side of the uh, previous E-Class is that I could control the seats. There's a button here where I can hit to control the seats on the passenger side. It sounds like it's not important, but the thing of it is it actually is pretty cool for the simple fact that you can move the seat, uh, move the headrest from over here when you're driving. See how I have a blind spot right here? You can easily move it, or if somebody's sitting in the chair and they don't know how to operate it, you can move it for them. So I thought that was pretty dope. Um, this does have the multicolor lighting. Still has the lights underneath, you just can't really see it right now. It has a light across here. The E-Class had the same thing. This is here also. Still got the heated steering wheel and stuff like that. Um, this, uh, just like the E-Class, I have the touch i mean not touch but the digital screen all the way across the difference with the newer bodies now is that this is a touch screen on this screen that as simple as it seems it's way more convenient to be honest with you uh the other thing is this still has wood this is super dope this wood is not like the other car had wood too but this is like uh i think it's walnut and it's like a raw type of wood material it's not like coated or anything or polished it's pretty dope um pretty nice the build materials and quality on uh, Mercedes are second to none. I've never been in another vehicle that I felt was similar. This already has these, uh, I forgot what they're called, but it already, I had to add these separately on the um, the E-Class. Uh, the pedals, still got the light, hopefully you can see it. This is not a third row seater. Just got two rows right here. Um, my other one came, the E-Class had AMG floor mats because it was an AMG package. It wasn't an actual AMG. This does not have the Brembo style brakes or larger brake calipers like um, the E-Class had. This one, uh, I don't even know what they are. They just like standard brakes or whatever the case. Um, they're still slotted rotors in the front, but they're kind of standard for the most part. So with this being said, I think this is a dope vehicle. This is updated from the E-Class that we had. The E-Class, just for reference, is a 2018. Um, I looked at the 2022 E-Class. It was a 350, I believe. And while it was nice, it looks pretty much the same inside as the 2018. They didn't really change anything. And that's what I didn't like. Yes, it probably has a little bit better shifting or transmission or updated programming, but it still had the screen exactly the same uh, as what we, we already had because back then it was only with S classes. Now with the new, new bodies, 22s, the C class is the one where they got the big digital display here and the S class has it. They left the E class behind. It reminds me of Lexus with E class uh e series and the um the ls series and all this so uh no es and g like the g 300s and 350s compared to the es 300s and 350s back in the day the e was more like the family mobile but they started making it look better than the g so that was kind of weird to me and i feel like they're doing the same thing with the e-class they're turning the c-class into more of a sporty a little bit more compact um automobile even though the c-class i think they made the trunk space a smidget bigger than what it used to be the e-class is bigger one thing i didn't like about the e-class and the c-class is they're very similar when you drive by you could i, I used to think that some c-classes were e-classes and vice versa but the more i knew about it i could tell the differences from the headlight difference and to also the trunk the trunk on the c-class is very short the e-class is a little longer the E-Class has more of a regular sedan look where the C-Class is slightly more sporty. Um, if I were to go back now and I would have switched them, I would have probably got like an E350 Coupe or something like that or some type of AMG version of an E-Series. I know they got the C63s and stuff like that are dope, but I just, I don't know. Some about the C-Class I just want to get away from. I don't like the interior of the older ones where it has a little screen right here and the digital, uh, the analog cluster. I didn't really, I wasn't really a big fan of it. And a lot of those C-Classes that you see, the Coupes, um, they didn't even have the the um interior uh led lights and stuff like that like these newer bodies have like the e-class had um what else is it uh still got the berm i said the stereo in here sounds better to me than the e-class i think because of subs i think they put the subs underneath your feet or footwell area and they i think they're probably bigger because they they hit a little bit better um I was going to get a sub installed and they wanted to charge me a lot because of where the battery I, I'm for whatever the reason they said something was underneath the seat. 
I'm not sure if that's where the battery is really located, but that's what they were saying. So I was just like, yeah, they're going to try to charge me uh, quite a bit more. So I had to hold off on that. Plus the stereo here, honestly, it sounds pretty decent. I really like the multicolor. Let me flip this camera back around. I really do like the multicolor. Uh, interior lighting is pretty dope. One thing about this car, though, that uh, I don't have that I had on the other one is the Mercedes Illuminated Star. I had a factory installed illuminated star, but I installed it myself. It was pretty simple. This one is a little more complicated. At least I think so at the moment. Um, I, it was hard for me to take the star off. I already got it. So I, I think it's called, it's the one that has, so the star that you get that is completely flat and it has like the emblem inside of the flat star, you can't put the illuminated star on there because it has some type of distance meter reading thing on there for um, when you do, uh, what is it called? Uh, cruise control i don't have adaptive cruise control or something like that where it slows down for you and speeds up on all this other stuff i don't have that on here so it is still a flat star but it's still a the, the chrome star is still on top of the flat part so on the e-class it was like kind of 3d where you could put your fingers into the slots a little bit and it was like a honeycomb pattern inside that was pretty easy you can dig your hands in there and easily twist it off this one's quite a bit harder i had to actually try to pop it off um because i didn't want to take the grill off and all this other stuff so uh, with that being said, what else was I going to say? Um, I do miss the pickup power of the E-Class. This one still has decent pickup for what it is, but this is still turbo, but it's not like no V8 or nothing crazy like that. You can get those options and can get the, the AMG options and all those other things, but this is not it. But one thing I really do like about this car, uh, and I don't, I hate this. I don't, the app on this, the newer bodies is way better than the older model, uh, connect Mercedes connect app. But this right here, this auto button, I hate it. I, I, they used to be over here on the E-Class. But this is so annoying, man. Like, they have to keep turning this off. Luckily, on a Tahoe, it's not even a part of it. They got rid of it, which is dope. Oh, and I was saying, this is much better. You feel the haptic feedback. This just feels a lot better. And plus on the fact that you can touch the screen, I like it a lot. It, it's just super easy and convenient. So, uh, let me turn this off real quick. You still got these illuminated door handles, which I really like. This is something that I first seen on, like I think it was like a 7 Series uh, Beamer. This still has the night package. If you don't know what night package is, these uh, trim pieces are black. The mirrors right here, they're all black. Um, they're not wrapped or anything like that. The whole roof is black. Um, yeah, so I, I like that part a lot. Let me see. Let me see if I can walk around because it's super tight. Ugh. Let me close this garage door. All right, so I'm going to show a clip of before it was tinted, and I'm going to show you how it's tinted now. And this is the, the vehicle right here. This is a GLE 350. This is not your typical GLE because um, this has the AMG package on it. So the difference to me is the regular version looks more of a family mobile. This one has more of a family still classy but slightly sporty right it has the amg these are 21 inch stagger wheels i really like these for factory wheels i don't even really feel like they're dirty now the car is dirty but i don't even feel like it need to be changed i love these um these cutouts right here the, the air vents i don't even know if they're actually active or anything like that if you see from the side all this extra stuff right here this is kind of like a kit body kit or whatever you want to call it that is not on the regular version um one thing i do miss though these are still leds and whatever but these are stagnant bulbs so what that means is the previous uh e-class we had and you can get it on here too this was a led thing when you turn the car on it's kind of like flickers and stuff it kind of makes a little light show basically what happens is it moves around for you the, the lights move around and i don't even think you have to turn on your high beams or anything i don't think so but the, the lights move in uh they're kind of automatic based on how you drive i got 25 in the front i added i think 35 on the sides because these ended up being i think 17 percent instead of 20 and there was like 70 percent or something light that was already on the front so with the light coming in this is a little bit lighter you can see inside a little bit here's a little bit harder but I did it on purpose because where I'm at, people pull you over for anything ridiculous. And I feel like if, even though this is already illegal, because it's a, sh a few shades lighter looking in person, especially with sunlight, 
it's gonna make it seem lighter than what it is and that's what I want, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to have it blacked out even though it looks better that way. 25, 35, and on my back glass right here is actually, I think I put 20 on top of it. So it's quite a bit darker, even though, well you see a reflection, but even though you can still kind of see through it, it's not super easy as it used to be. So you can still see the silhouette, but it's not like it used to be, and that's the whole point. One cool thing about this vehicle, it has puddle lights here, has a Mercedes symbol that comes right here. And for some reason it comes on when you go in reverse. I don't really know why. I'm gonna show you a visual of it. Um, I'm gonna cut into my old clip and just show you that. This gets illuminated here. It's hard to see, but it is illuminated. Let me just open all this up real quick. So again, I do love the light interior. I think it's nice. The problem is it just gets dirty quicker and it doesn't last as long. I prefer black pillars and black, uh, the black roof lining and stuff like that. It will get dirty. The seatbelts are light. They will get dirty. They already look like they're already getting a little dirty. Um, I'm changing the floor mats. My other one came with like AMG floor mats because again, it was like an AMG uh, kit on it or whatever you want to call it. This is not an AM, true AMG or anything like that, but it has the AMG sport body package or whatever you want to call it. Um, this does not have the AMG steering wheel where it's, it's like Alcantara or it's a flat bottom, which I do like. I still like the big roof. I had the big roof in the E-Class as well. Perforated seats is cool, but again, I prefer no perforated seats. On the other car, when you turn on the heated steering wheel, um, you also get heat here. And you get, well, I can't remember if that's what it was or when you put the heat on the car. I can't remember. But this used to get heated and so did this. Now, I don't remember if this does or not. I just know the steering wheel does get heated. The seats get heated and they get cooled. So I'm not really sure. I have to double check on that. Love the wood. These fine details are really nice. Um, Mercedes has a really good uh, warranty. It can be pricey on the last Mercedes I took in to get a Service B. Um, a lot of the stuff, honestly, they did to the vehicle, I didn't even need done, but I still paid like over $1,000 to get this service. It was like oil change, rotation, um, alignment. Al alignment and rotation, I definitely didn't need. We only put, I think we only had the car for like a year, over a year, a year and a half maybe. We only put like 5,000 miles on it. This vehicle right now, we've already probably drove a few thousand miles on it that quick. So uh, we've been using it quite a lot. I actually kind of like the size of it. It kind of makes me question, do I even need the Tahoe at certain points? Because the, the car is roomy, it's not too small, it's not too big. It, it drives similar to a car, but there's enough room for it. The back seat is usable. Like I said, we try to get a Macan, a Porsche Macan, and the back seat is so bad. Like when you sit down, unless somebody's squished all the way to the front, there's no foot room at all. So I don't like that. Um, the trunk still has the kick. You know, you put your foot underneath to open it. The glass doesn't open up separately, which I wish it did. Um, the trunk is still electric and all that other good stuff. Um, what else can I even say about it? The grill, I'm gonna cut to it real quick, but the grill in the front is the diamond grill. Uh, you can even, like I said, you could put a GT style grill on here. I've done stuff like that before, like I said, but uh, I would never put like false badging and stuff like that. If anything, I may debadge it, maybe, and just leave the Mercedes logo. I might make the Mercedes logo black. I don't know. The only problem I have with cars that come like this stock that look decent is that just like with Teslas, when I see them with the whole, like they pre-made it to look pretty decent off the rip is that when I see people with the same exact model, I just feel like it looks like we're just twinning out there. It don't look like there's no personality. And to me, I always look at vehicles as a reflection of your personality in a sense. You always want to customize it. So let me know in the comments below. Should I go four Giatos on here? Let me know if it's not worth it. Just keep it a classy mobile. Um, these are factory 21 staggered. I can go either 22s or 24s max. Um, I don't know if 22s are gonna look silly on here. I've Small rims, aftermarket never look right to me. Um, so yeah, let me know how, what you think about that. Uh, let me see, let me flip this camera back around. It sounds silly, but I actually like these little grips right here. But anyway, interior wise, besides like not having carbon fiber and all this stuff, it looks like the, the, the G63 um, that I really am a big fan of. The car is basically the same body, except it still has the hood lines, the aggressive hood lines, um, the indentations on top. The biggest difference is really this part of the trunk. Um, the trunk normally 
cuts out like this and they call it a coupe even though it's four doors they call it a coupe and uh i think they call convertibles cabarets or something i can't remember but anyway it, it slopes down so kind of picture this part gone and it just looks like a tonka toy and i think the like the new bmw x5 x6s and stuff like that this kind of adds more of a family vibe to me a little bit but that's okay it's still a classy slash sporty slash luxury automobile mini suv whatever you want to call it and right here i don't know if this is actually active or not or it's just for show but it has these aggressive cutouts right here like you'll find in some c classes um got the dual exhaust it has uh the trailer hitch and all this other good stuff right here um what else i think that's all i can really say so this was still purchased at mercedes um I should have went, to be honest with you, man, we kind of got got on the trade-in or the sell of the previous Benz. We didn't even owe that much on it. The more I look at it now, I feel like we should have just kept that joint. Um, we didn't owe that much at all. And we should have at least got, I would say, five to 7,000. 5,000 minimum, 7,000 would be fair. Um, more for the trade-in. We got a smidget of equity in it, but it should have been more. I've seen cars selling for quite a bit more in the same body not even as clean and i did some customized little things to it to make it look better and i feel like we kind of got got on that and what happened is we went at a state to another mercedes dealer and even though you can go to different mercedes and you know they don't discriminate on that they're not supposed to at least i just feel like it was a patient thing i should have been more patient i should have did more homework i should have went to my local dealer first i just went online to them and I didn't see they had much inventory. So the one that I saw here, I was I like the body style of it. And it is kind of hard to get with the same exact aesthetic setup. I don't care if it was a 2020 or 21 or 22. It is a little hard to find it. And if you find it used uh, to have it in a good condition or low miles or whatever the case is, it's kind of hard to find the exact combination. Um, excuse me. So if you do Mercedes, right, if you buy a used Mercedes, some Mercedes dealerships will mark up. Some say they will not, but if you can order the Mercedes, they're supposed to charge you MSRP. But back to the C8, even if you ordered it, they're still gonna charge you up. You know what I'm saying? So they're really getting you over, and that's why the C8 is just not possible right now. Uh, again, still thinking about the Tesla as the, the everyday mobile. I don't feel personally comfortable with driving uh any type of mercedes uh daily all the time and that's pretty much what this vehicle is going to be turning into i haven't drove the truck in a long time since the vehicle has been purchased but uh, i kind of want to keep it sitting more so the last mercedes we tried not to drive it at all we only drove it when it was like local driving when it was necessary and it came in handy and um due to that is how you know in today's climate you're able or we were able to get rid of cars and, and kind of like make our money back in a sense this one is a little harder and different because i feel like we didn't get a good deal coming into the coming into the situation not like the tahoe or not like the even the other bends specifically so i felt like we should have went to our regular dealer first First, man it kind of does suck but it is what it is what, what are we going to do now um now we just got to figure uh certain things out keep it pushing uh yeah and i think that's pretty much i'm trying to figure out because this is the second time i actually recorded it the the actual audio wasn't working well at all the actual audio isn't working well so um what else what else what else if you buy a vehicle out of your state, you're still going to have to get it inspected. They're supposed to reimburse me. It only cost me like $90, but I had to do that myself before they can give you um, the registration or mail it to you, whatever that process is, before they submit it to the MVA. So keep that in mind if you buy something out of state. Again, I still got it from a Mercedes dealer, but I felt like just the inventory is different. Like over here, there's no GTs, there's no GLEs, no Gs, no no nothing AMGs, Harley you're gonna see at all, right? But the GT is the is the car that is super dope that I like. But the uh, the actual truck version of it right here is, I believe it's a GLE 63S um, is the one I like. Um, again, aesthetic wise, it looks pretty much the same. So I'm happy that I get to experience something that, as far as aesthetic wise that is similar, just not the performance level. Check out my other videos, man. Please make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, or whatever the case is. 
Um, I, I want to share more and more. The more I go through it, I want to change. I'm like right now, I didn't show you the process of buying a car and the process of looking up a car. I don't really think about those type of things. Um, going forward, I'll try to incorporate it slowly. It just has to be a natural progression for myself um, and when I share certain things. But uh, some of these things that I talk about even now, I normally wouldn't even talk about. So I'm doing it on purpose with intention uh, to share and be a little more open since we already are on the internet. It is what it is. Uh, with that being said, make sure you do everything at top level at your top level. You remember, you know competition with anybody except yourself. So make sure your next move is your best move or at least your better move.